Excel is a great tool. There is no doubt about it. However, the data revolution requires a more robust way of analyzing data. The modern financial world now need new measures to analyze performance. For example, have you ever tried to quantify human emotions in your customers? Feedback, which is written in English, such as anger, positivity, negativity, trust, fear. Or have you ever tried to predict next day stock price movement using Twitter tweets? They are also written in English or any other language. Or have you ever established going concern of a company in financial audit by looking at customer satisfaction trends or finding suspicious transition from a large data set? These are just a few examples and we are not going to learn these type of analysis in this course as these are very advanced level topics but this course will set a strong foundation so you will learn these and many more now there is a concern in excel user community that many python data science artificial intelligence courses designed for it professionals that makes it hard for them despite their willingness to learn python because most of the example provided in these courses are mostly IT related based or non business examples. The aim of this course is to show you how a beginner with no prior knowledge of any programming can set a strong foundation of Python and start applying in their professional life. The course will use business related example to understand various features in Python. The course divided into two sections. The first part will cover basics of Python programming, the grammar of this language, concept of variables, data formats, data types, operators, conditional statements, loops, functions, various data structures available in Python such as list, dictionaries, data frames and more once the basics are out of our way we will use python with real data we will use business and stocks data to develop our concepts this is your computer a bundle of various small parts assembled together to achieve great things but the computer doesn't know what to do and how to do it this is where computer programming comes into the picture to instruct a computer what to do and how to do it programming is nothing but a sequential set of instructions to a computer to do something similar to what we do in our daily lives we give instructions to other humans such as turn left or right give this mr a another example could be our instructions to a car such as increasing or decreasing speed stopping the car by pressing brakes and turning left and right we do all this by interacting with different parts of the car programming is a sequential instructions to the computer to do something question how do we give this instruction to computer the answer is we provide these instructions in writing we type what we want a computer to do using a precise grammar of the programming language that we are using and then we run it the technical name of the grammar in programming is called syntax different programming languages have a different way of writing syntax but the question is how a computer understand human language as it only understands zeros and ones a process called compilation or interpretation happens once we run our instructions that process converts these instruction to a computer language which is zeros and ones so whenever we want to learn a language we first install its software that has everything that a computer need to understand human language python is created by Guido Van Rossum and first released in 1991. Python is the world most fastest growing language. Here are few reasons of its popularity. It's an open source. Open source means the code is available to public. You can 
edit the code, develop new features, create your own commercial products, and top of everything, it's free. Another reason of its popularity is its large community. Sometimes we need help when we get stuck. So this is where the community helps. There are various platforms available where you can ask questions, show your code, and the people in the community will identify and resolve problems or bugs in your code. Not only that, the Python programmer community working day and night to enhance the capabilities of Python and also developing new features. Another reason is it's a high level language. In previous videos, we have discussed that computer understands zeros and ones where human understand A, B, C, D and words. High level languages are those that are easy to code by human and require an interpreter or compiler for the conversion. Next, it's a general purpose language. That means it can be used in many industries and areas. For example, creating websites, desktop application, mobile application, performing data analytics, artificial intelligence, creating blockchain, etc, etc. There are other languages which are for a specific purpose. For example, HTML is used in creating web pages or mobile pages. CSS is to style and color pages. PHP works in the backside of the website. So these languages have some specific purpose where the Python can be used in many areas. So you can see Python is the first step toward many next generation career paths. In previous lectures, we discussed that programming is all about writing instructions. But the question is, where do we write these instructions? We write these instructions in a text editor. The primary text editor that we are all familiar with is a notepad in Windows. It comes with all Windows installations. And similar to that, in Mac environment is text edit. There are other options other than basic notepad, which are notepad++, atom, sublime text, and there are many more. These text editors increase the process of writing code. In programming, these instructions are known as coding. So from now on, we will refer instructions as coding. Now there is another type of text editor that are more advanced editors are known as integrated development environments or IDEs. I think it's the time to show you the difference by an example. So it will be much more clear the difference between the two editors. This is an HTML file, a web page. I have written this code in Windows Notepad and these are my instructions or my code. Now if I want to see the result of my code, I will see in a browser because it's a web page, either Firefox, Chrome, Internet Explorer, etc. So I have written this code in Notepad application, but I have to see the result in a different application, that is a browser. So code written in one environment, but the result in a different environment. Let me show you another example. This time I have written a simple Python code where I am multiplying two numbers. Don't worry too much about the code. We will learn in details how it is written. Now, if you want to see the results of this multiplication, which is saved in a variable Z, we need to go to another different environment. That is command line or command prompt. This is how we go into the command line environment. And this is how we run the file. What we have just experienced is the code written in one environment, but to see the result, we have to go to another environment. To avoid this changing places or changing environments, the programmers use IDEs so they can see code and its results at the same place. And now let me introduce the IDE that we are going to use in this course, and that is Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter Notebook is very popular in the data science community and it's very easy to use. It has few more benefits that we will see in upcoming lectures. The reason I choose it to use in this course is that the students are not from an IT background and may not be good at installing different IDE setups 
and setting environments. And sometimes it becomes very complicated. So to avoid this complexity, I would suggest that we will use cloud-based Jupyter Notebook without installing anything on our computer. For that reason, I will be using Google Colab. All you need is a Google ID or a Gmail address. That's it.